What up? It is Golden Spaces, an Odyssey original podcast with Justin and Nat. Woo! We needed a moment, Dub Nation. We needed a moment after that game. I think everybody did. <laughs> Hearts yep. were racing. Some gray hairs may have come for people. Yeah. <laughs> Might have taken some some years off of live, so we needed a little bit of time to uh, decompress <laughs> sure. and process our thoughts before we got together to um, record. So it's about an hour and a half almost after the game, and I'm just like, Justin, I like I. It was just supposed to be two two. That's the only thing you can say right at this point because. You know, Warriors World had a really great tweet where they said both both teams feel like they should have been up 3-1, right? And they're going to feel like that from the way it ended, that they had a chance. And Warriors are going to feel like that because they should have gotten game one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because, man, I, like, I just knew, like, they had the game one. And then, like, Steph calls <laughs> the timeout. Let's start there. Because, I mean, that's, like, the biggest thing in the game, right? It's like, Steph doesn't realize they have no timeouts left. Yeah. And even when Kerr burned that timeout, I'm not going to lie, I don't think that I realized that they had no timeouts left. I just thought that they just had, like, because how many timeouts do you get per, is it quarter or half? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think you get three a quarter or something like that, maybe. There's media timeouts that are built in. I knew he burned a timeout, but I figured he still left them with one timeout. Like, I didn't think he would do a challenge and leave them with no timeouts left. Like, that's not a very Steve Kerr thing to do. So I did think, I was like, I tweeted, like, damn, cost them a timeout. But I honestly, I didn't realize that they didn't have any left either. But the fact that I, I knew immediately. Know, huh? When Steph called it, and they started like going back to the huddles. I'm like, wait, we don't have timeouts. Why is everybody acting normal right now? And the Kings bench, they they were like, they got up, but it was a while before anyone realized it. Right. I'm like, did they just somehow give them one back, or did somebody foul him? Or I'm like, what is going on? Because we definitely don't have any timeouts. And then they said something, and I was like, no. And I was Fucking just like, that. I was like, okay, they're up five, so like. You know, just don't let them get a three. They got to shoot this technical. Like, every worst possible scenario. Right. I'm like, this could happen. be a four-point possession right here. And then, of course, then Steph goes back on the other end and doesn't get the floater. And also, were you surprised at how early he took that in the shot clock? Kind of, but at the same time, Fox gambled on a steal and didn't get it. Um, I thought he might have gotten fouled right there. But at that point, he could have dribbled it out, but he shot it. And I was like, ah. Like I, I wasn't too mad at the shot. I was just like, "Damn, he didn't make it." But yeah, it was early though. Was even doing that though, like even if you make it, it's still a one possession game. And, you and know, they got time, mm -hmm. right? I would have preferred you still take time off the clock to not give them a chance really at a lot of time. You know, mm -hmm. so just uncharacteristic like, stuff. From it there. is, it is. I expect them to make those kind of mistakes, but. You don't expect as in Sacramento. Sacramento. Yes, I expect Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And right, because they took shots pretty well. They wanted to get a shot off quick, but I don't think they made some of the, the best like shots. And just like, you know, it sucked because like Clay couldn't corral that rebound. Like when who was it that shot that first three? And or I know Monk took a shot that I was like, eh, but I feel like was it Harris? Someone took a three. I don't think it was De'Aaron. And then mm -hmm. De'Aaron got it back and shot that three. And I was like, oh. God. Right. It was just I was like, oh, not like this. They cannot right. game like this. Because I'm like, they don't even have a timeout. So like Yeah, if he would have hit that shot, it was over. There was no way they can get a shot off or nothing. I mean, obviously the time ran out on the shot, but and I'm like, it's only a one point game, so they don't even need a three. They just need a two. Like, and that's like their money. I mean, I know we were going to, like, guard the paint better, but, like, that's their money. So, plus, I mean, guys have been sh have, have been hitting threes. So, it just was like, that's why I'm like, it was just meant to be 2-2 two, two because, you know, right. 
It, it was, because, I mean, that's the only way you can look at it, because, like, the Warriors tried to give them this game, you know, and it's a shame, because Steph really was great all game and was really so key for them. Just a very uncharacteristic mistake from him, and I'm glad that because he's such a good person that God rewarded him with a W still. <laughs> right. Made up for that mistake. Yeah, the basketball yeah. guys did no no Wardell. You're, you've curried favor with us, pun intended. So <laughs> we're going to hold you down. And your friend, Harrison Barnes over here, is going to brick this shot. And I'll tell you some dweeb is in my mentions. Like, just so you know, Fox would have gotten around him if Draymond wasn't there. Okay, and Fox would have gotten around anybody. Like, Steph's initial coverage was good. And I was like, smart defense is not letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. Like, the way teams let Dame do and the way they let other guys do. That's smart defense. Right. The and Kings wouldn't let Steph said it. go one-on-one -on -one either. <laughs> like, exactly. What are we saying right now? Like, I was like, at what point are you trying to make exactly? Right. I mean, no, seriously. It, it, it you know... It took some years off my life. So I started there. But all that to say, Justin, should we be giving the Kings more respect than we have been? I give them a ton of respect. I say from the jump, well, after they won their first two games, I said the Warriors were playing them um, essentially like they were a young team that's going to make a ton of mistakes, and they weren't making those mistakes. You can say that they were at home, but they – they were going out there and they were making the plays that needed to be made. And even this game, they were making the plays that needed to be made. They just ended up missing the shot at the end. So you give them a ton of respect. And it's like, for the Warriors, in my opinion, if, they, if the Warriors themselves take care of the ball and just play with a certain level of respect that we're giving them, giving the Kings, then I think this could have been a five-game series, to be honest. First well, two that's games. what I originally said, but like I'm not, I wasn't picking it in five because I didn't think the Kings were good. It's just that, like to me, I still think it's the Warriors who are costing themselves. Like that's that's what I'm saying. And I know that the Kings fans don't like that narrative, and I get it, but it's just to me, it's undeniable. Right. And um, you know, so. But I don't know if it's just like, because I don't feel like they don't respect the Kings, right? I think a lot of that is just you're not sharp because of the kind of season that y'all had. And they're still working their way through, all, like, mm -hmm. you know, like they know how to play with each other, but they also have to like, they're not clicking on all cylinders yet. Right. I definitely think that. I, and I think the style of play that they, you know, that they do all the time is just like um it's conducive to some mistakes being made just because it's such a high it's such a high variant style, such a dynamic style, a lot yeah, of risky passes. And all the passing. Yeah, all the passing, just the shots that they take, Clay, Steph, and Jordan, um, the plays that they try to make, even on the defensive end, a lot of gambles that they make, Draymond, it just ends up paying off a lot of the time. So some mistakes are gonna be made, but it's the the Jordan Poole throwing a full court pass that gets picked off to Malik Monk when you have a five on four. It's the, um, you know, Steph calling that timeout. It's the fourth uh, shot at the end. It's the Kerr um, challenging when he probably shouldn't have. It's just stuff like that that it's like if you eliminate those things, that has nothing to do with the Kings. That's just right. you just doing something boneheaded. And the Kings did some stuff on their end too, just throwing it out of bounds multiple times. But I think if the Warriors limit theirs, we've seen when both teams play in the half court against each other, the Warriors look like the better team, right? Yeah. And, I mean, we've seen in most of these games the Kings have just had more possessions than the Warriors, which is how exactly. they were able to keep it close. The Warriors are shooting more efficiently. Um, and the Warriors haven't even shot their best, but they're shooting more efficiently. Um, you know, like people are going to say um, Fox had 38, and 38 is 38. But, like, Steph had 32, and he shot the ball more efficiently, right? Like, it's just – they are getting many more possessions and, um, you know, they got better in the second half. Cause like in the first half they were losing, you know, mm -hmm. um, that possession battle. Um, so that third quarter in particular, they, 
made up that gap. And they kind of went right back to it in the fourth and giving the Kings more possessions, but it ended up not mattering. They just, <laughs> they survived. By that yeah. I mean, cool did have that play, but like he really did play well. Um, For sure. You know, he really helped them. He was getting to the free throw line. He made some tough finishes, um, really helped them. Um uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, people are going to feel how they feel, but to me, I, I've i always, like, De'Aaron Fox is one of my best, you know, favorite players. Before this series, we said, like, in the spaces I said, I was just like, look, I just, I don't think this team is a low IQ team. <laughs> you know, I think they have a smarter coach. I think they're a smarter team. I think they're going to exhibit a poise that some of the other young teams they don't play uh, that they've played against don't possess. Um, mm -hmm. And then you also just have the factor of like Mike Brown knowing them. And they're also way more skilled than a lot of these other young teams, as opposed to a team like Memphis, whose half court offense for the majority of the season has been terrible because they just don't, they just lack skill. Right. In certain areas, Dylan Brooks can't shoot. Ja can't really shoot. Jaron, hot and cold. Bain can shoot, but we can see he's struggling right now. Whereas a team like the Kings, you got to sell out on their shooters because we just saw tonight with Keegan Murray. You give him a, a, one, a few, one or two like easy shots, and then now the rest of them, he's hitting the tough ones now. Like, and they got three or four guys who can shoot like that. Um, so you got to be, you got to keep your head on the swivel at all times. Got to be locked in at all times because this team will make you pay when you don't. And that's what we've been seeing in this series. Yeah, and I mean, credit to Kenny. He kept saying, like, he doesn't think that we've seen an offense like this. I still think, though, the Rockets were a comparable offense, to be honest. It, it was different, but I feel like we've, I feel like we've seen a potent offense before. Right, for sure. Um, um, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I agree with him. I agree with him from the standpoint of, like, the style. Yeah. I agree. And and the difference, too, is, like, the Warriors are older now, and also Kevin Durant isn't with them. So, like, they're seeing that offense where they're older, and while they also have offensive weapons, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not the same. So, yeah, I mean, I still think if the Warriors started this series at home, it's a five-game series. I still think if they're more careful, it's a five-game series. But, you know, um, we'll see. A lot of people are saying, like, this is going to go seven. And I understand why they're saying that. It does have the feel of, like, one of those series. But I think the Warriors are going to take care of business and finish it in six. I do, too. They just got to clean up the mistakes. Literally, they, they made a ton of mistakes this game. They made a ton of mistakes in the first two games, and all three of those games come down to, like, one or two possessions, right? Yeah. The one game this series where they did not have an overwhelming amount of mistakes made, they blew them out. Like, it's literally right. that simple. When you play in the half court, we've sh they, they've shown that they can stop the Kings deep. They can stop the Kings offense in a half court setting. When they score and they set up their defense, they stop the Kings. And on the other end, even if they aren't getting transition bucket at the transition bucket, when the Kings have to guard them in the half court, they're getting whatever they want still. Like, it's just, they're the better team. They just got to stop the mistakes, which... All I know is for these next two games, Kerr better be prepared to go 43 minutes with, with Steph again, because, you know, like, the importance of going in there, and it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder because now you're on the road, and, like, we know... I mean... I think the main guys they've been relying on know how to play on the road, you know, cause he's not like, I don't, I don't know how much burn Kaminga's going to get in this series. You know, I don't know that you put a Moody in on the road anyway, you know, mm -hmm. I still think he plays like a Dante, but I mean, at this point you're going what, like um, eight deep, maybe seven ish. Right. Cause Gary Payton, the second didn't get that many minutes tonight. Right. I, think I would say for sure seven, and then you just test out uh, Dante, Kaminga, and Moody, I guess, in practice, whoever has the best practice leading up there. But, yeah, because um, I mean, like, what, Moody had, like, three minutes tonight? So I just 
you know, he has to be prepared to do it. He was asked about Steph's minutes. Like, he was asked about Steph's minutes in the fourth quarter, and he basically said Steph stayed on the court. So I was happy mm-hmm. to hear that. But it's just like, if you would have just played him the 43 minutes in game one, bro. <laughs> right. This could look Literally. a lot different, you know? So could look a lot different. And, like, going in there and getting your win in game six, it's just – gonna put them on edge and you come back home and close it out it's just the better scenario yeah in game five yeah yeah for sure it got to it got to hopefully the the next few days off gary can get back to 100 percent because he just didn't look like himself obviously out there tonight so right i mean this has by far got to be the best playoff series, right? And after you watched that Cleveland Knicks game, I was like, oh, thank God, because I don't know how anyone's watching that series. Like, they barely get to 100. It's just, ugh. Yeah, I haven't watched a single minute of that series. It's just, just ugly basketball to watch. I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, if you're not a fan of one of those two teams, oof. So this has by far had to have been the best series. And then the most comical one might be Lakers- <laughs> Grizzlies because even after Memphis spotted them and I get it, it's a game of runs but bro they scored nine minutes I mean nine points in the first quarter that's ridiculous and, and still made it a close game right I told you they're they not skilled <laughs> they are not skilled nine points in, a, in 12 minutes of NBA basketball is disgusting I don't care how you disgusting but that's what I'm saying like I don't think the Lakers should feel like they're safe definitely not but they are going to, and this is why I feel like the Warriors just got to take care of business because I think the Lakers series could be an easier series for them, hypothetically, because the offense of the Lakers run isn't as complex. You know, it's a lot of LeBron, a lot of AD, and you got a bunch of others that can be schemed out of a series. And then um, they're just, I don't know, from top to bottom, I just don't think they have the talent that the Kings do outside of LeBron and AD. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the I think the Grizzlies can actually push it to six. I do. Like, I think, you know, so even like even if the Lakers win that next game, I think the Grizzlies can go back home and push it back to a game in, six in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. So at a minimum, I still do think that series is going six. And because of like all the days off in the Lakers series they would still end up finishing that series after the Warriors. I think if the Warriors can get done in six. So, um, you know, and if somehow it ends up being the Grizzlies, I don't think it will be, but if it does, because I mean, what a job, what a job real off like 22 points in a row. Yeah. They had no answer for him. This is why. And that I was on one hand. His six. hand is going to get better. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that series, like you said, it can go six, it can go seven. For real, for real. Yeah, they acting um, like they got that one already. It's not. It's not in the bag. It's not in the bag. But especially we'll when I thought they couldn't even like keep up their lead last night. It's like right. And they Bain scored nine points in the first point. quarter, bro. Nine. There you go. They got a score. So anyway, let's um. <clears throat> This is another great team win. So let's talk some of these uh, players, <laughs> shall we? Um, we already talked about Steph Snafu, but he was great. You know, he was great during the game, as he always is. Um, I don't know what else you can say about him. Um, people like to, I want to say this, people like to, every five seconds on the NBA broadcast, we talking about Davion Mitchell and his defense and what he's yeah. doing because there'll be one or two possessions in a game where Steph dribbles up the court and he just stays in front of him the whole time. It's like, bro, he's getting filleted. Like Steph, <laughs> Steph is, is averaging like 30 plus on like 70% true shooting this series or something crazy. And you can say, Hey, he's calling for screens or whatever. That's just offense. That's NBA offense at the end of the day. Nobody's coming down and just taking their matchup one-on-one. 10 times a game, right? Like, he's still scoring on Davion. Davion is really not affecting him. He had one turnover this game. He hasn't been turning the ball over like crazy. Bro, he's 35. Like, like, even if Davion is allowed to stay in front of him, he's 35. Who cares? Like, <laughs> like come on, man. We got to stop. I think people are just so thirsty for somebody to be finally stop Steph or be the Steph stop or whatever. 
he's cooking them. Like he's been the best player in the series. I think Bro, if you're averaging 30 plus, you're not shutting anyone down. I don't even know right. what we're talking about. So I he's don't completely even control in the game. Yeah. He's completely controlling the game every minute that he's in there and it shows up in the eye test and in the stats. So we can keep talking about Davion, but like, let's just come on, man. Let's be well, real. General ESPN's conversation. They had a whole conversation about Bob Myers and if he's moving on. And I'm just like, why? What are we doing? Like, <laughs> what are we? I was like, I tweeted about this. I'm like, what? Okay, we, this is not a conversation that needs to happen right now, Doris. Like, the game like, is. Uh, on. What are we exactly? Like, what are we game. talking Even about? They did it with Steph, and they were talking about like how great he is and what he means, bro. Like, talk about the fucking game, like. Nice. We know, we know Steph is crazy. Right, like damn. But the game is on. Talk about the game, man. Shit is funny. Um, Fox and and Dre getting into it on the court. Yeah, Dre is a he's a chess he's a chess master when it comes to trash talk and stuff like that. Like Fox the other day is giving Dre his praises, and Dre's like, I don't care, I'm gonna call you a pussy in the game, right? <laughs> like, like Dre don't. Is that what he said he on the podcast? Care. No, uh, no, De'Aaron. Well, that's what he did. I couldn't make out the words. Is that what he did? Did Oh, no, yeah. He was calling everybody on their team the P word. Like, yeah. If you go back and try to read his lips, he was calling, he was talking crazy to them, like, and to Fox specifically. Um, But that's what Draymond does. He tries to get people out of their game. He tries to make it, like, clear, like, we ain't friends while we playing out here. Like, I'm going at y'all. And he kind of was locking Fox up. Like, and it's, I mean, we can talk about Draymond too, but. It's a testament to like how great he is on the defensive end. When people say he ain't this and he ain't that defensively all time, like he's all time. Like there's been nobody in history that can do some of the stuff that he does. He legitimately guards one through five. Like there's some people like they try to say Braun can guard one through five at his peak. Braun was never guarding fives. Let's put that out there. He was never really guarding fives. He can guard some ones at his athletic peak. But Draymond is going from Sabonis to Anthony Davis to De'Aaron Fox to Brunson to Jalen Brown. He's guarded these dudes in playoff situations and locked all of them up. And he's met, he's he's completely blowing up everything you're running on the on the other end. Like I think people just got to give Draymond his props defensively. Offensively, he was definitely a little rusty. Three he was. fourteen. I'm like, bro, just dunk it, please. Like, stop blowing these bunnies. Just fucking dunk it, yo. Just dunk. Literally, people keep going up against this team. Like Harrison will jump, Murray will jump, Sabonis will jump. They're not blocking your shot, bro. Just lay it up. Clay passed out a layup. Draymond's missing that because he shot a play be- passed on made me so angry because it resulted in a turnover and they scored on it. Right? Exactly. Like, I tweeted right then. These, this fucking team is so horny for threes. Like you literally had to goddamn. <laughs> like, bro, just lay it up. <laughs> God, Lee, they're not blocking shit. You can see even Steph gets his blocked because he tries to, like, scoop under with two people on his back, and he's probably getting fouled, to be honest. But if you over 6'6", man, just lay the ball up. God, leave. Like. And uh, there were a couple layups, too, that Jordan blew early, and I'm like, it looks like he's trying to avoid the contact. Like, he's, like, turning his body in these awkward – like, bro. Yeah. Just, I mean, just I get it. He go is through somebody's like, chest. He's getting thrown around down there, and he's a little guy. But, like, I need you to, like, if you're going to go up and do all that, you got to actually get the foul. You can't, like, avoid, look to avoid the contact. Right. Do what Malik Monk does. He just jumps straight into somebody, and they and then flails his arms. Yeah, and, and I would prefer some of those, like, because there was, like, a couple, of, like, and, like, they just let them go. Like, Pool did it, a couple of people, where they just, like, let them go to the rim, and they didn't even challenge it. Bro, wrap them up and force them to shoot the free throws. They might make it, right. but like, stop letting them just go to the rim like this. This is Jordan, crazy to me. This is the like Jordan will have a great if defensive I played, game. I'm Pat Beverly. I'm doing all kinds of shit. <laughs> okay, like, but you don't even gotta be Pat Bev. Just don't just run out the way. Right. Sometimes Jordan will just run out the way. I'm like, he had one possession where he was on a fast break. I think Davion was coming at him, and there was another guy behind him. And he just got out of the way. And I'm like, bro, Davion, just jump straight up with Davion. If he makes it, he makes it. But, like, you can't just not contest it at all. <laughs> but, hey, he still played He still played pretty well overall. Like He did. He did. 8 15, can't complain. He did. And, like I said, he, look, he, like, they, they call fouls for Jordan Poole. So, you know, if we're not playing Kaminga, he's like, 
our most reliable, although his free throw shooting has still been a little off, but you know, because even though like Andrew Wiggins can get them and he made some of his, the two, he might miss one. So, you know, Jordan's mm-hmm. the more reliable free throw shooter because they not just like giving them the staff. So um, he, he definitely did what he had to. Like, look, at all in all, you got to say Sabonis is being neutralized in this series. You know, he's not having the kind of impact that, you know, like when people are trying to debate who is the King's best player. Come on. It is De'Aaron Fox. I mean, we said it, but it's right. just like it is clear now. And I'm sure there will never be any more questions about him being an all star going forward because he's a it monster. Is him. It is him. Yeah, he's a monster. We already knew what was going to happen with Sabonis. They didn't know over there on that side <laughs> because they had obviously not experienced playoff basketball in years. But we could see from the jump Fox is the type of player whose game translates to the playoffs. Um, Sabonis is just not. When you have no counters, all you do is bulldoze left and push people out the way. By the way, he got away with like a crazy travel, pushed off yes. on then traveled, and I they like, still didn't call travel? anything. And that jump ball, that jump ball. That was crazy. I I was so angry because I'm like, why can't the Warriors have back that possession? It's clear as day. And then the Kings go and score. Like, I was living. Right, right. I was living. Terrible. It was, it, was, it was some questionable officiating for sure in the fourth quarter. Um, what did they do? They didn't. They missed the obvious kickball. And then they just how – how do you get a jump ball out of that? Didn't the Warriors have the ball? Yeah. Talking about it was an inadvertent whistle and they can't tell. What you mean? This shit is crazy. This shit is crazy. Then they gave Jordan a tech for, for – what did he do? He did one of these? Yeah. Like Wait. a hand wave? Come on. Like we didn't just see Trey Lyles hand hand wave the ref the other day after trucking somebody on the um right. and he got an offensive foul call and he waved his hand like, come on, man. It's the playoffs. I mean, even on the broadcast, bro. they were saying, like, I like to see you just give him a warning there, like Yeah. Nobody wants to see y'all. It's the players. And you're affecting <laughs> the fucking games. Right. Like you think you've got egos. Get out your fucking heads, B. This shit is crazy. These refs, they I really want to make it about them. I know y'all watched basketball growing up. I know y'all watch this shit. Stop being fucking goofy. Shit is they won't. Dumb. They won't. Shit is hella let's, dumb, yo. Let's, let's keep it going, though, with the players, I guess. Yeah, man. She just got me tight. Listen, I got to tell you. I mean, this was always where I was anyway, but I'm back on my Fox greater than, um, better than uh, Ja. Oh, Ja? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because you said you had, like, toned it down. I'm like, oh, I'm all the way there. Tom was like, son, like, he, he can shoot the ball. <laughs> right. Makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, John, can, it does, he doesn't have a reliable jumper. Right. If John gets hot, the thing is with John is, like, teams will always let him shoot open. No matter how many he hit, he always going to get shots. Fox will hit a few, and it's like, okay, we're going to have to run him. You're going you're gonna to have to be a little bit tighter on him. Uh, he's just so dynamic as a scorer. He can get to the mid-range. He can get all the way to the rim. And he can shoot the three, especially when you're sagging off. Just a super, super tough cover. And it's showing, like, without him, they probably would have got blown up. Right. He hits his free throws. He's moderately efficient to very efficient everywhere on the court. Clutch. Like, right. I mean, like, come on. He's better, bro. I don't want to hear nobody tell me nothing. Facts. I'm glad he's starting to get his attention. His shine. KT showed up. Who? Yeah. KT, Clay Thompson. Yeah. Clay did. He had his quarter, too. He did. Um, Yeah, I mean, look, you got contributions from everyone. Loon again. Um, Dre, like, offensively, yeah, he struggled a little bit. But defensively, he was Dre. You know what I'm saying? He did what he had to do. Um, mm-hmm. you got contributions from Jordan. You got contributions from um Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew Four made blocks. a big shot, clutch shot. Oh, the little midi that he hit. Yeah, yeah, he got it all. Five offense. before Steph blew it. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. 
I still want Andrew to cut a little bit more and just yeah. go up with a little bit more force. I think he was going to try to end Sabonis' life on one of those fast breaks, but he blew a tire. It's kind of like one of those plays. Um, like, if you're playing and you have it in your mind, like, I'm going to jump as high as I can. This happens, this happens kind of, like, from time to time. Your leg would just, like, not do what you want it to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just something that happens. Like, And he tried, to, he tried to really jump up high, and you could just tell, like, his leg was just like, nah. So he he kind of lost it and it went out of bounds, but he was trying to end Sabonis' life right there. But he got to have that type of aggressiveness just throughout the game. Yeah, like his jumper's sure. been on, but like, bro, go put it on somebody's head. Like every time Fox is down there trying to guard you, just post him up and just lay it in because he Fox yeah, don't want to like, bang down there. Foul? Go attack that nigga, yo. Right, yeah, four fouls, and he just not really that physical inside. No. He's a smaller guy. He wants to be up on a on a perimeter. He don't want to bang down low like that. So, and it might tire his legs out on the office event. So they really gotta they really gotta exploit that a little bit more. Word. Word. They gotta go in and be the champs now and go get that game, and they gotta go get it because the Kings ain't laying down for them. Facts. And I think they know that. And that's why I'm still going to, like, come back to this whole, like, people ain't scared of the Warriors anymore. Because I don't really think, honestly, there were many teams who the Warriors have played that were scared of them. You know, like, the Rockets were incredibly cocky, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think particularly, like, the Mavs came into the series scared of them. They just found out that the Warriors were a lot better. But I don't think anybody was coming in shook it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, not stars. Role players are always going to be role players, you know? And I said, I was like, look, they're scared. I said, I sent it to Chris. I said, oh, this not scared? Because you heard them comments from Kevin Herter? Oh, yeah. He was like, we got to win a game on the road. And I'm like, well, actually, you don't, Kevin. You just need to win all your home games. But And I get it. Like, you definitely want to win. But that's the whole point of getting home court. But that he doesn't want it to get to a game seven, you know, that's a little bit of him showing you. Like, they're a little nervous about that. Even with the Warriors not having a great road record, that still makes them nervous. They remember what Clay did in their building? Facts. Yeah. They, it just the Warriors got to go in their game five like it's game seven. For yeah, for real. And I, I feel confident that they're going to have that mindset, but it's really going to be about the turnovers. It's going to be about the turnovers, and it's like I feel at this point, generally speaking, they're playing much more like inside out. But it's just like y'all can't go back to these stupid ass threes, bro. Yeah, but yeah, you just said it. They've been playing. They've been taking more layups. You just got to make them. Yeah, Draymond missed so many layups. Um, they just got to make them. It was a one stretch, I think, in the either the second quarter or something like that, where Dante and Steph missed two layups back to back, and the Kings scored on them on both of both of those shots. So, yeah, they went forty five for ninety. They probably should have went like 50, 51 for ninety or something like that, and then the game is over. Like they put up like one forty at that point. Yeah. Well, what what day is that game? Wednesday. Right? Yes. Yeah, so they got a couple of they got two days off so they can recover after playing these minutes that they played tonight and um be ready. Be ready because it's going to be crazy at Golden One Center. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Kings fans been holding it down for the arena. They're not letting Warriors fans overtake it. But I wonder now, because it's such a pivotal game five now, if you might get a few more Warriors fans in there. Maybe. I don't think they're going to overtake the building, but right. you might. I'm, I know the game is going to still be expensive, but we'll see. It'll be interesting to see. I got a lot of texts, though, Justin, I'm going to tell you. I got a lot of texts, and I got a lot of messages after the Warriors won game three. Like, this is it. Series is theirs now. Um, From different folks, you know. Um, And a lot of people, too, as well, saying, like, what you said, that game four is likely going to determine who wins the series. 
though they're going to continue to tell us about this damn if you start to row down in the series the number like all right like shut the fuck up about it already like it's been <laughs> happening more recently we've had like in recent years a number of different teams go down to oh and still come back your win series so it's more frequent now than it was i think in the past mm-hmm. um but regardless it's like this is an all-time great team and all-time great players so like, all right, enough about it. But why to you, Justin, is game four? Like, why did you feel like it's so consequential? Uh, no, I was saying game three was the game. Three? I said if they win, because in my opinion, the Warriors are just a better team. And I thought there was a prime opportunity without Draymond and without Gary for the Kings to kind of, like, steal a game. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you go up 3-0, you're probably going to win. In my opinion, I thought if the Warriors found a way to win game three, then that could be the momentum push to carry them to finish out the series. Um, the longer this, the longer a series goes, the the more Steve Kerr is going to figure out, you know, what you're running on offense and game plan to stop it. And the longer the series goes, the more Steph is going to figure out your defense and Draymond is going to figure out your offense. So it favors the Warriors. And they, I just think the Kings missed the opportunity to go up 3-0 and now they really missed the opportunity to go up 3-1, and it's pretty much a best of three with four games of tape for Steph, Steve, Dre, and Clay to just figure you out. Um, so I said from the jump, well, I said before game three, if they take game three, they're going to win four straight. I still believe that. We're just going to have to see what happens in game five. If they approach it with the, with the requisite amount of focus and intensity that they that they should have, they should be able to beat this team. Like I said, three close games so far in the series because of the Warriors' self-inflicted mistakes. If they do not do those things or even cut those mistakes in half, they should be able to win fairly, I won't say easily, but they should be able to win decisively, double-digit win. Uh, and that's just is what it is. And they got to monitor the, Steph, the non-Steph minutes a little bit better because I'm pretty sure he's been a positive – in every game, like at least five point positive in every game. And that's another reason why I think they're just going to win two more in a row. Yeah. People were like being annoying, like they can't like make these kind of mistakes again. Talking about like the timeouts. I'm like, shut up. Like how often, like they're not going to forget a timeout situation again in the series. Like we get it. Like it was bad, but like move on people. Like that's just like one of those rare things that happens. All, all time greats have them. Magic was once called Tragic Johnson. Like, mm-hmm. Bird had the moments. Like, they've all had the moments, okay? So, yes, I get most of them. A lot of them happen younger in their careers. But they all, like, have, like, a moment or a lapse or something you just don't typically see from them, you know? So, it's not going to happen again. I would bank on it not happening again. Yeah. So, it's like, just be happy. They got the dub. And that's all that matters. Like, People on here criticizing Dante and 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 going at Kaminga. I heard like, Kaminga didn't like, have good minutes. Huh? That's fine. I mean, right. people go. People always go overboard with the slander. You can just say but somebody like, wasn't playing he's well. He's been helping all season so much to the point that y'all were like, he's more valuable than Pool, right? And now tonight, Pool was the one helping, and Dante wasn't. And now y'all want to go on and Dante like. Bro, they're all needed. Like, this just it's not a Dante series. It doesn't mean that he's not going to help us throughout this postseason. That's why he's a role player. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, Otto's impact wasn't the same in every series. Like, right. He didn't even players. play in some of the map series, right? Yeah. Like, like, he, was, he was out for some of the map series. Yeah. So it's just like, calm down. Like, they won. It doesn't matter if it's ugly. It doesn't matter if it's efficient, though Steph is efficient. Like, none of that shit matters, bro. It could be right. 10 for 50 for all I fucking care. You just get the W. Just win the game. You exactly. just get the w. <laughs> like, Literally. Like, <laughs> just win the game. Draymond was 3 for 14. You could say, hey, if he missed, if he make three of those layups that he missed, that they win easier, but it don't matter because they won. A win's a win's a win. Like, here's what it is. Yeah, I don't want to hear all of the um, 
I don't want to hear all of the, oh, they almost sold and they almost gave that game away. And da, 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 da. That's why people are like, man, the Kings should have won that game. I said, the Warriors should have won game one. The Warriors should have won game one and game two. Draymond literally said, got suspended. I, I, I said, the Kings got benefit because Draymond got ejected game two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I said, they got some, like, you know, Malik Monk had 14 free throws. Bro, I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about the Warriors' luck. The Warriors we're... have to play game three without, like, unless the Warriors win in a blowout, that's the only game they're supposed to win. They have to play without Draymond, without GP2. So if it's uh, if it's ever a close game, the Warriors win, they're not supposed to win it? That's right. how close games go. Sometimes it goes <laughs> to one team, sometimes it goes to another. And that's what we saw the first two games. We literally, Wiggins... Pump fake and drive and land it up away from them winning game one. Draymond got ejected in game two. I'm sure if he finishes that game out, they probably get enough stops to win. Uh, like, and we, come on. And, and when I bring that up, people are like, it doesn't matter if they controlled it now. They could have, should have, didn't. So, yeah, same shit to y'all. Right. I don't want to hear all that. I don't want to see Warriors fans like upset. What you upset about? Bro, they won. Oh, we got to clean up the mistakes. Yes, you have to clean up mistakes after every game. But I'm like, are y'all watching all the other playoff series? Like, seriously. Who's dominant right now? Besides Denver, I'm supposed to be moved because they're doing that to the Wolves? Is Denver even dominant? The Wolves could have won their last game. It's like, bro, you looking around the league? I mean, even the Celtics freaking lost to the Hawks, bro. They, right. like... Swept Katie in the Nets last year with Katie and Kyrie, and you losing to the Hawks. <laughs> They're in a semi close game with the Hawks right now. And by the way, like I'm sorry, I don't want to hear any more about Donovan Mitchell. Like, like he is who I always thought he is. Like, he's a very good player, but like, you know, he's like one of those people, like a Jimmy to me. I just don't believe in him. People Why are you talking about Jimmy. What's still up with the Jimmy stray? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He's <laughs> one of those guys. All season, people tell me he's having a great year and blah, 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 blah. Because, like, Jimmy is like, yo, <laughs> you, you go in, you get game one, and y'all get blown out. Like, there's no in-between with them. Why is it, like, win and then get destroyed? Like, these <laughs> dudes can not have close games? Like, he can only play well every other game? We're talking about Jimmy O'Donovan. That was Jimmy, Both. but Donovan, I mean, like, he was atrocious tonight, his shooting. It's bad. Yeah, I didn't watch the game, but it's hard. It's really hard to be a consistent, efficient, high-volume, high high-scoring high guard in the league and be small. We just take what Steph does for granted so much. Like, it's hard, man. Like, and we see it. We see it all the time. Every year, it's somebody that we expect to go crazy in the playoffs, and they just don't. Oh, they but get see, double I don't team. expect it. And that's the thing. I don't expect it. And then people tell me I'm a hater, and I'm this. I'm just like, <laughs> you Ronson know, doing I, that I actually that. said that Donovan Mitchell was the best player in that series, but it's not. It's actually Jalen Brunson. He's the best player in that series. He has been, unequivocally. 29, 6-6, six six. he's, yeah. He's, he's dicing them up on offense. Come on. He's a tough cover. He had five threes, too. Like, he wasn't really, like, a high-volume three-point shooter. But if he's going to hit a lot of threes, it's over. Mavs fans got to be sick. Got to be sick. Oh, yeah. We're talking about bad management. <laughs> if they lose Kyrie for nothing after, after gutting their team to get him, which is definitely a possibility, that's terrible, man. Bro. That's terrible. You you lose Brunson for nothing. You ch- trade for Kyrie and then lose Kyrie for nothing. You mm-hmm. might as well you might as well pack Luca bags. You might as well pack his bags. Like he out of there. People are trying to give Kerr the credit for for Dre coming off the bench. They're like, this is why Kerr is the best. It was Draymond's idea. <laughs> right. And they like Kerr said that it was something they were thinking about before. Yeah, sure. That was never happening. <laughs> I kind of figured I, – I, I had a feeling he was going to come off the bench because they just, just they had just won, and they just blew the Kings out. So I'm like, why would they change up the starting lineup? Right. I mean, I thought, like, they would split the bigs. 
I thought that was obvious, but I didn't think he would say like Draymond, you know, be the one because, you know, he never wants to bench Draymond. So um, I had no problem with it, but it was reported by multiple outlets like that Draymond is the one who like, yeah, came back. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, they started the half with their regular starting five, which I also thought was the right thing to do. Like that, that lineup, I, I I think splitting them is good. Right. But it didn't have like the same impact as it did the other night. So there was like no need. It was fine, but it wasn't like, you know, devastating. And I, I thought it made sense. Like just go with your yeah. best five, yo. Like they're still the best our starting five in the league. And they are ridiculous on defense yes like that that that's why the kings the one quarter the kings didn't score over 32 points was the third quarter they only scored 23 and it was because of that lineup was just locking them down and that lineup when it came time to close they did what they had to do exactly you know people don't want to give credit to steph for that final possession after he fucked up you know the the but he was good like yeah like draymond helped to cover it but like he was good because De'Aaron Fox at first didn't get by him. And then mm-hmm. and then Steph, you know, shaded him. And then, <laughs> you know? and then Steph recognized that pass in the last minute and got out and closed out. Right. Well, he actually so, picked Fox on one of those drives, but then Fox got it back and got the foul. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I was so happy when he when he actually like got the steal, but then he just couldn't secure it. I was like, fuck. Yeah. But again, people just underrate what he's able to do. And he's doing this. He almost 40, man. Like, he's 35 out there staying with, how old is Fox, 24? Bro, let me tell you something. Fastest dude in the league? Come on. I ain't going to reveal my age, but I'm just saying, like, son. (laughs) It's really wild. I be walking up and down the stairs of my building. I be like, (laughs) 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 But, like, Andrew Richard, I'm like, yo. I don't work out for a week and I can get back like, oh, God. <laughs> and Wiggs is out there 38 minutes, block, four blocks. You ain't playing how long? Come on, man. These dudes are crazy. What Wiggins is doing right now don't make no sense. He missed mad time, Justin. Right. He missed mad time, Justin. Yeah, he might be top five athletes in the league. Yeah, He's man, ridiculous. I mean... Endurance, explosiveness, guys. all of that. I'm proud of them. And I for sure know the Suns are Fugazi. Kawhi Leonard plays, they're, the Clippers are winning that series. Yeah. I never I never believed that the Suns were winning that series if Kawhi played. Everyone thought they needed Paul George. And I'm like, mm. I picked the Clippers to win it. And then Kawhi. It's just, uh, you know how I feel about Kawhi. And Paul George. I'm just, why my guys can't stay healthy, man? I mean, ultimately, I'm going to still root for them to lose to the Warriors. But it's like, I would love for them to just get through a postseason healthy. Right. You know, you want that. You I, To me, I want that for them. You know, Paul George went through all that gruesome shit early in his career. Like, it would just be nice if he could get through a series. That would be nice, but. And Kawhi's a great this player. Point. You just want great players to play, man. You want to see the best of the best go against the best of the best, but every year we just get hit with some something. But it's, Injuries it's just unfortunate. Here kept going crazy. Giannis, Jimmy just got hurt. Tipo just went down. Harrow. Yes. Like, ja. it's just, I don't know, man. Like, I just pr- like I want everyone to be healthy. I swear that like when I say that I mean it, so I do. And I just hope our guys can stay healthy, yo. I hope they can stay healthy. Anyway, Justin, we both on the same page. They need to go get this this game, this game five. And what's what's what are the vibes? Oh, the vibes, the vibes, they won two games in a row. The vibes at a 8.5 because the job not finished right now. 8.5. We're on, we're on that Kobe. Job not finished. Okay. I could live with that. Well, listen, y'all, thanks for tuning in with us. We appreciate it. It's 2-2. Two, two. We said that's what it was going to be, and that's what it is. So we're going to have a mailbag coming out. Um, 
But thank you for tuning in with us. Make sure you download, share, um, rate, five stars, give us a review. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Golden Spaces Pod. And please continue to support, send us feedback, send us questions. We definitely, definitely appreciate y'all. And we hope you're enjoying the playoff coverage so far. Until next time, guys, take care.